First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. That's the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, double honors to the apostles and others of great most on uh, our teachers, spiritual fathers. Salawam and salutation to your brothers out here that's pushing words of truth and sincerity and love. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwa paying attention. Um, this video is just directed to, um, you know, really just surrounded math Hoffa and um, certain scriptures of the word that are harder to digest, you know, um, just a few. Um, there's a lot of them out there, but there's, there's some scriptures that are easy to apply. Let me not say digest. I'm actually referring to applying them. You know, for all the brothers out here, that's a part of this thing we call the truth um, from a stem from a one West doctrine of the 12 tribes. Um, you believe that the people of so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans can descent are the true biblical Israelites according to the curses. And for all of us out here that believe that and hearken unto that, um, we all know that there's quoting the scriptures, there's reciting them, there's learning where, where they are, who said them, there's the data behind the scriptures, like the metadata, like who wrote this book and, you know, interesting facts and whatnot. But then essentially the most important thing would be the application of these scriptures to apply them. And you know, the number of men from who knows to who applies is completely different, right? You'll come across men that are in the church or men that always learned from um, a theology school or a seminary school or like a Vocab Malone or Creflo Dollar. These men can quote up and down the scriptures. So on a surface level, that's how they grab people's attention because they added some scripture, scriptural remembrance. Um, they add and they add that with a, a type of, um, you know, uh, an appeal like speech, you know, in a very appealing speech manner um, and salesmanship and showmanship. And then you got yourself a uh, church, you know, you got yourself people who love to show up there. They feel good because our people are sheep. You know, we got to understand that the mind of a sheep is very simple. A sheep just wants to be led. You know, a sheep wants to be led. All right. You can lead a sheep to the pasture or you can lead a sheep to uh, slaughter, essentially. But a sheep just wants to be led nonetheless. So it's always looking for someone to lead them. And so... You know, I just wanted to shout out a uh, Math Hoffa because, you know, it's not normal that we do that. Uh, this is pretty taboo along the lines of how we regularly get down. But I'm only saying that is because when I went, when I was out at camp on 34th Street, some maybe five to ten years ago, and he walked by, you know, and I noticed him from the URL. And he he was by himself. One thing I say he was by himself. He was across from Macy's, you know. And he looked back like he was at the at the corner. And when, at that time we saw celebrities, and and I was, you know, we were doing the work. We're not going to stop what we're doing. And you know, I wasn't speaking anyway. But I'm on post, and I saw him, and he looked, you know, he looked at me, and he gave the head nod. And I didn't give one back. You feel me? I didn't give one back. That's not something that we was doing. Or accustomed to doing like stopping, you know, we're not even, you know, showing love to, you know, a so-called celebrity. Really, you, you so-called celebrities or famous people, um, we the last, you kind of, you're the last ones who we would give attention to. It kind of worked like that, you know what I'm saying? But either way, you know, I ain't, you know, I ain't show no recognition. You know, it, it, it was what it was. That moment passed, and it was. You know, I don't know how he took it, but I was just like, you know, he gave a head nod and I didn't give one back, but he just kept walking about his business, whatever. And uh, years later, I see now he got this platform in which he was kind of influential. No lie, he was influential with me kind of wanting to do a platform style teaching as well as um, the drink champs and just all these platforms. You know, the wave of the wave right now is, is podcasting. That's just the energy in the room. That's just the, where the energy is at. That's just where 
um, the people will go and click on. That's where the people going to show up. They want to hear more candid, open, unrehearsed uh, conversation, you know, just like in the plantation. When we were planning for cer certain things on the plantation and talking amongst each other, we had our speech that we would talk in front of mass in them. And then when we got our slaves got around each other, there's a certain way that we spoke. So it's kind of, you know, that was a loose reference of what, what I liken it to, but it's kind of like that loose energy that just, you know, is us now. We can open up and, and, and talk. That's the type of energy of um, the um, podcast. But needless to say, I noticed this man, I'm going to go into the scriptures that I was referring to at the beginning, not leaving that out. That's about applying the scriptures that are kind of hard to apply. You know, kind of hard, taboo to apply. Don't get brought out too much because it's it's like, how do you apply this? Well, you know, it's it's one of those scriptures that easier said than done, so to speak. But I will say this: in this clip right here, twenty nine minutes into watching uh, my expert opinion, um, in this clip right here, he mentions they start going into Deuteronomy. In 28, and he seems more relaxed than I ever seen him in any of his podcasts when he's talking about the scriptures. And he said many times he's revealed it that he is a Hebrew Israelite. He's revealed that many times. So I'm, I'm gonna play this clip, you know, and then I'm gonna get back to the scriptures. I just wanted to, you know, you want to say shout him out only because I recognize, you know, that was a long time ago when I seen him that day on at camp. But I never forgot that moment. And um, and now that you know, fast forward all his you know rap career with the URL, and then fast forward to what he's doing now in the podcast. I love the idea, you know, so much along with Drink Champs and all that that I kind of adopted that idea in the form of teaching. But watch what he do right here, and how serious he get when the scripture come out. That 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 no. Without even right. saying like we, we right. talk about the shining, we talk about we want right. our PNC like it's like sometimes we don't even got to talk. Right. It's like yo son. Like, right, right. right. Avatar is like a, is, is, they made blue Native Americans. Mm. <laughs> I just want to say, whole concept say you guys real quick. Blue Native um, Americans. There is a reason for slavery. I've said this a million times. On so you peep that, you know, you, he bringing up Native Americans. I peep, I peep what he doing. And I just want to, <laughs> I just want to, you know, pay homage. It's almost like, you know, if we were listening to rap, you know, and everybody listening to rap for different reasons to motivate you, to build you up. But I listened to rap. I grew up listening to rap because of the lyrics, you know, because I could visualize and conceptualize. And then I like the wordplay. I like metaphors and similes. And after that, learning about metaphors, and I would just put dudes on that had ill metaphors and concept. I learned about wordplay, about rhyming techniques, how pun would rhyme. Uh, even Eminem, how he rhymed multiple syllables and, you know, words that don't usually rhyme and I just thought rap used to be something where it was a concept. It was a construct of being smart, being witty, being unpredictable, you know, being, being, uh, t you know, having double entendres and triple entendres. Before it was just party music and what it is now, drug music, and murder mu murder rap, you know, boast rap, brag rap, uh, clout rap. It was about concepts and, you know, change in, in, in their scriptures, believe you me. That I brought out in the old video about certain scriptures in the in the word that when they wrote it they were they wrote it in the alphabetical style like A B C is Psalms one nineteen when you go into the Hebrew the first three uh, the first five sentences start with A and the next five start with a B and the next start five start with a God it's just so ill and go all the way to Z and it's just like yo man yo they was putting their own flow and originality in the scripts. You know, and it just takes you to a different realm of thought, kind of similar to how I used to listen to rap with the similes and the wordplay, you know, and um, you see how you just do that in there. You know, you know, avatars, because he let, you know, the thing is, secret discipleship is real and we got to get to a point as Israelites that we understand these men is watching us. Not only that, it's not the bag of bows. Yeah, man, y'all watch. We ain't got to get upset at that. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't, don't ever let yourself don't, that old man get get any energy in the room don't give him no energy you know what i'm saying yeah they watch us yeah because the lord had secret disciples but how was the lord treating his men his secret disciples he dealt with them you know when nicodemus came and seen him at night that wasn't because nicodemus was a night uh, a night what they call it a night bird or whatever they call it a night owl 
That's because he didn't want to get caught. You know, he was part of a different sect. But he heard the words of the Lord, and that puzzled him to, enough to, for him to want to pay attention. Guess what? These celebrities, these famous people, quote unquote, you know, world celebrities out here in the rap game, in the music industry, whoever, they go, they they watching, they watching, they watching, they're watching, they're learning. So when you got that one view count, or that twelve view count, or that forty view count, or that hundred and ten view count, or that six hundred view count, or that thousand fifteen hundred view count, and then you go and click on. Um, or Sagari maybe, or um, some of these other camps, uh, IULC, and they got 15k or 25k, and you be like, hmm, um, that's strange. And then you go over to even, you know, a Matt Hoffa who has, I don't know, this video alone might have something like, let me see, let me see if the, the screen gonna flip. For the Four point three thousand, but a lot of his videos be having like man, like a hundred and fifty thousand, even more. And so you ask yourself, this man sounds like us. He's not a part of us, but he sounds like us. That's when you could just accept the reality that they secret disciples. And the way they come to us, back then they had to come to the Lord directly. Now they're going to reach out in different ways or they're just going to watch a video. They don't even got to walk up to you and meet you and all of that. They could just watch a video. You know, they might may or may not leave a comment. As a matter of fact, we know he watched our videos because after that happened, Matt Hoffa, he left a comment on one of the brothers' pages or something like that. Let's have a talk, a talk about it or something like that. But either way, I'll see what he's doing. Let's keep playing. Bye. You know, before I, you know, there is a reason for slavery. Of course. And um, the reason for slavery is disobedience, no matter how you want to look at what it. What you mean by that? Disobedience. Oh. So, watch, watch how quick he going to um, teach mode. <laughs> you about to teach him, man. Watch, watch, watch. He's leaning up. He's getting serious with it. He got the, he's about to explain and break it down better than uh, this dude over here is. But he about to, because he more learned. He done listened to. To the prophets, he understands that this is all scriptural, and he understands that these are called breakdowns. And once you apply the scriptures to your, once you are able to see the scriptures, the best way to actually know that you know it is to teach it. And so, look, he get excited about teaching them the scriptures. Watch. Reason for slavery, of course. And um, the reason for slavery is disobedience. No matter how you want to look at what it. you mean by that, disobedience. Oh, so, God. Against, on, against God, on, 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 against God. Man. Right. right. If you, if you read De Deuteronomy yeah. twenty-eight, when you, when you start to it's look, like the whole look it up, you have to start to see when did this so-called slavery <laughs> even? Yeah, you wanted to go all into that, you know what I'm saying? But you know, you got it. You might, you might have that that contract at the same time, man. You know what I'm saying? That that stops allowing you. So ultimately, it gets to the point where, like, what you gonna do? You you love money, or you love you love the Lord. See, the Lord said. You either gonna serve money or mammon, you know what I'm saying? And you know all of the, you know the nice cha chains and everybody getting getting money on this show now. You know y'all wearing designer, you know you wearing the top products, man. You know came up, you know your money done came up in this in this show. And so um, you know they're gonna be they're gonna be questioning what you bringing this out for, what you talking about this for. They're gonna demand that you start. Switching up these topics and getting a little more niggerish, you know, because that's been the motto all these years as far as hip hop go. Make it niggerish. That's what Crazy Bone was talking about or Busy Bone. Or Crazy Bone was talking about in that clip how they destroyed hip hop. Um, that's what he was talking about, how the contracts, um, how they just started signing dudes that was, you know, talking about murder. And just, you know, they did that backdoor deals with the prison system. To uh, keep the population of the prison over ninety five percent populated, in order to get receive money from the government, and so they had to continue uh, funnel people into the prison system, and, that, and that's what they chose to do. The method was uh, hip hop music and rap music. So if you are antithesis of that whole s construct, to flood the prisons with uh, niggas that listen to rap, rap culture, then you are now the target. All right, you are now a target. You is in the crosshairs now. You see what I'm saying? 
or the, you know that's the wrong i think the crosshead look like that here you go you in the crosshairs you know when you make yourself a target by you know being involved with hip-hop but not essentially sticking to hip-hop you know sticking to what what the method of what they doing with hip-hop is you become a target now you know and so you know meanwhile you getting money and getting bread but if you keep speaking that righteousness that ain't what they put you there for that ain't what you they sponsoring you for that's not what they want you to do you have now become a target just like the conscious rappers a target just like anybody that's high up and doesn't do that illuministic quality stuff you know that you sold out your sold your soul for now you becoming more of a target and they not playing them games with you they need them jails filled up and they found a way to do it and they're not bulging on that they're not budging on that and so ultimately you know he tried to teach deuteronomy 28 hit him with that real quick so i was just you know noticing um all the secret disciples out here that listen to the israelites now this is scripture i was talking about application is is very hard to do one of the hardest things to apply is luke 6 and 27 simply said yahweh shah said but i say unto you which hear, love your enemies do good to them that hate you bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you we understood that the lord in matthews 10 and 5 and 6 said go into the children of israel not into the samaritans we understood that the lord in uh, luke 1 and 48 i believe and uh, matthews 1 and 21 you know, Luke 1 and 48 or 68, he was talking about, um, I will save you from your enemies. In Matthew 1 and 21, he says, um, I will save his people from their sins. And we know that the Israelites are the, who the Bible is written for and about, you know. And when this deals with Gentiles, it's dealing with Israelite foreigners, men who started to uh, apply the customs of the heathen nations. But their bloodline is still Israel, so they still us. So when it say, but I say unto you, which here, which here, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you. This is dealing with your brothers because you never was supposed to war against your own. And that's why Amalek or so-called Jewish people today, they're known to, if you go to jury duty with them and there's one of them and one of them, uh, they might have been convicted with murder. They'll never convict their own. They will never do that. They will convict any other race but their own. That's why you don't see when they chop, you know, the pedophilia rings dealing with them, you don't see that be, um, um, aired on television because they will never convict their own. Harry Weinstein, you know, Bernie Madoffs, we don't know where these guys is at. They might be on a, a foreign beach. Epstein, we don't know where he at, you know, because he wanted them. They could have just removed him from the jail and put him in Tahiti and, you know, stay there for, for the next 30 years. We'll give you cosmetic surgery, whatever. That's what they did to the Germans in and um, and from World War Two, they changed their names to different sounding names, non-German names, and moved them to uh, in Brazil. But either way, Scripture said, "Love your enemies, do good to them that hate you." So you're not supposed to be on some negative, um, negativity towards your brother. You you correct them in meekness. You deal with them. You can rebuke him. You can judge him. Open rebuke is better than secret love. You can, you can sincerely in meekness deal with him and. You can instruct him and teach him and train him. That's what the scriptures are there for, you know. Um, but you also got to love your enemies of your brothers, the ones that persecute you and despitefully use you. You got to pray for them. Man, these are things that, you know, easier said than done. Because when you're going on, you know, when you're sending up your prayers at night, the last thing you want to do is pray for that brother that you got to ought with. Pray for that brother that you got a problem with. Pray for that brother that you want to take up, you know. Y'all, yeah, every time y'all you around, you, you don't even like when the brother around, you don't like his energy, you don't like nothing about him. that. These things happen, man. This ain't nothing newer than the sun. Come on. But what we're what we saying is, you guess what? You still got to pray for that man. Now what? Now you're going to apply this or you're going to overlook this script? And me and the brothers, you know, uh, uh, I'm on Kabar, the brothers of Carl, priest of Carl, we had to talk about this scripture maybe four or five years ago where we, you know, you know, we was talking, we was going through this scripture. And, that, and speaking just about this topic, how how this is one of them scriptures that you'd never really apply because it just be so hard to want to pray for somebody that that's doing you wrong or doing you dirty or wrongfully using you or abusing your situation, your friendship, whatever, you know, because these things happen. That's why this scripture is there. 
And there's a necessity to pray for your enemies and bless them that curse you. It's a necessity to love your enemies. It's a necessity because ultimately it's not about your little art. Your little art could mess up the whole game plan. And guess what? Paul, Barnabas, certain men, they split up. They did what they had to do. You know, and they kept teaching. You know, Apostle Ronald went into that not too long ago. Paul, Barnabas, they split up. And Barnabas went his way, kept teaching. Paul went his way, kept teaching. I believe it's Paul and Barnabas, or it may have been Paul and John. All right, it says, bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. So you always got to take an L. And this truth, your ego can't exist. There's no room for the old man. The old man don't want to do this. Hell no. The old man used to, you know, F you, F all the haters, F this, my I, F him, F the one. Nah, man, you got to pray for those that spitefully use you. So even the, even the, even, you know, you know, the real true brothers, you know, uh, the ones from the ones we get, you know, I, I personally get along with for the ones, you know, I, I'd rather, you know, not even be around. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's how I really get in this truth, you know, and that's not reflected of that man. That's more, that could, that's just, I'll take all of that. That's more reflective of me of where, my, where I want to place my energy at the time. But guess what? Regardless of if I want to be around a brother, I'm praying for him. And the, and the application of this scripture and to live up to me wanting to apply scriptures, I'm praying for a brother, you know, I'm praying for a brother that might, that might become an enemy, that might become more of an enemy than a friend. I'm praying for that brother. All right. Luke uh, 23 and 34. Then said, Yahweh shall forget, Father, forgive him, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Man, this is before Yahweh was going up on the cross. Man would have said, man, I for, what? Forgive. Forgive nobody that's about to kill me, that's, that want to see me die. Nah, Yahweh I, I see, he was our example. The scriptures say he's the author and finisher of our faith. You go into that word author. You see, it says chief, 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 like a captain, because he's the beginning of what we know is faith. He's the captain of our faith. He shows us how to really love. He shows us how to really embrace suffering and pain. He shows us how to be a sac living sacrifice, acceptable to the Lord. He said it. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. So we coming in that state. We're not coming in our own righteousness. Well, I'll do anything, but I can't do this part. Nah, you got to rebuke that thought and put off the old man permanently. All right, Acts 7 and 30, Acts 7 and 60. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And I believe this is the story of Stephen. Yep, Stephen. You know, and so Stephen once again about to be stoned to death. All right, Stephen put to death, man. You see? But here it is. He stayed firm, stayed strong, and he had a very um forgiving spirit on him even to this very hour man right before he fell asleep wow man so we ain't got no excuse man you want to be into the scriptures want to be a, a hebrew israelite you got to turn back the right way understand what the man before us was doing this was a man that was getting stoned to death that asked the lord Cried out with a loud voice. He loudly said it. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Let me get that in the um, a different um, different version, translation. Uh, NLT. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with their sin. Do not charge them with their sin. All right? Lord, hold not their sin against them. He didn't even want them to get to get hurt by the Lord, man. Because Paul was in that crowd as well. And that's, you know, the real understanding. He was praying for the elect that was in that crowd, mainly Paul. You know, they probably was out there for some other few. So imagine that. Some of the people that's actually working against you right now, there's room to pray for them. Right? There's room to ask for them to be uh, um, helped and directed and covered. And so that their sin isn't laid upon them. There's room for that. Yeah, there's room for that. And so, Lord, will this video is out of fire. Till next time, Shalom.